Born to uneducated laborers in a small steel mill town in Pennsylvania, Pink's journey through life is a dizzying barrage of strange events. Along the way, we find him a social misfit and politically radical punk rocker living in a twilight world of sex and drugs as a member of the rock group Friction. At the age of 20, Caesar was seized by a shattering religious vision which changed his life and outlook forever after. It was like my whole reality collapsed and was replaced by something new in an instant. It's very frustrating in a way because it was probably the most important moment of my life and I would like to be able to share it with those I'm close to but it's just one of those things which words are never really able to communicate. Afterwards, I went into a period of intense study. I definitely felt like I was walking on the edge of sanity. So I decided to drop out of society for a couple of years. For the next two years, Caesar led a quiet existence close to nature in a Thoreau-esque hermitage deep in the Appalachian foothills. During this period, Pink lived in extreme poverty. Living in the forest with little outside contact, Pink learned to survive without telephone, television, hot water, and with only a wood-burning stove for heat. The austerity was wonderful in some ways. I felt as if I had OD'd on modern life. So the simplicity of waking up in the morning and chopping the day's firewood and starting the fire seemed really wonderful. My girlfriend was with me and we had a bunch of chickens so we always had fresh eggs to eat. We learned to brush our teeth with baking soda and make our food from scratch. It was tough, but being surrounded by nature really made it all worthwhile. After two years, Pink moved out of his forest retreat and soon after went from living in poverty to winning thousands of dollars in a government lottery. Soon, Caesar had worked his winnings into an estate which consisted of a small business, a home, rental properties, and an extravagant collection of Eastern artwork. But at a time when most men would have sat back into a comfortable existence, Caesar turned in another direction. When I was 20 and saw the vision, it seemed as if a destiny had been set out before me. But a lot of time had passed since then and I had really turned away from that destiny. To follow it meant to lose all the things which a man wants from life a wife and friends, a home, material possessions. But now I had all those things and I just felt empty inside. Soon, Caesar began to self-destruct. Within a short time, he had lost or thrown away all of his material possessions and severed all his personal ties in order to gain artistic and emotional freedom. In the midst of this, Caesar was the focus of a vengeful conspiracy among the sheriff's department and members of the local police force in retaliation for a harassment charge filed by a state senator on Pink's behalf. Soon afterward, he was warned by the state attorney general's office that his phone was illegally tapped by an unknown source. Only days later, he was taken into kangaroo court, thrown into jail on invisible charges, and inside, other inmates were urged to beat him at the sheriff's request. Luckily, the inmates recognized Pink from his punk rock days and warned him of the sheriff's intentions. When you see the force of the lull coming down against you, it's truly frightening. At one point, they tried to get me to sign papers which they wouldn't let me read. When I refused, they stripped me naked made me bend over and grab my ankles so they could do what they called a deep cavity search. Once they get you behind bars, you know you're at their mercy. It's really dehumanizing. After being forced to flee his hometown to escape the wrath of the local authorities, his time was spent living on the edge. His life became a hectic whirlwind of disastrous love affairs and dangerous forays into the dark nights with the lost souls of America's underculture. From being held at knife point in a New Orleans project, carjacked by one of New York City's 14th Street transvestites, to finding solace among small-time drug dealers, homeless vagrants, and cheap prostitutes, 
as you watch friends be destroyed by drugs and suicide and lovers one by one collapse into mental breakdown while trying to survive amid his chaotic lifestyle. As the Imperial Orgy began to experience their first rush of local success, Pink's life spiraled out of control. Homeless and living in the back of an old car, physically worn and mentally disintegrating, he collapsed into what he refers to as a spiritual death. During the final stages of Pink's journey, he wrote an extended prose work titled Apology, which chronicled his experiences and thoughts. Experience the Imperial Orgy at theimperialorgy.com